Hi everyone, I'm Meryl from Pasta Social Club and Food 52's resident pasta maker. Let's talk about one of my favorite things for a minute, and that is butter. Growing up, butter was a big no in my house. Everything was some version of low fat or sugar free. It actually wasn't until a few years ago when I was studying in England that butter made its way into my life in a meaningful way. And then of course, in culinary school, butter is everywhere. So now I can't go a single day without eating butter in some shape or form. The dish I'm going to be making today is everything I look for in comfort food, and it may come as no surprise that it all starts with no small amount of really great Kerrygold butter. It's also packed with jammy caramelized onions, lots of cheese, <laughs> a hit of cherry vinegar, and some herb seasoned breadcrumbs. I've paired it all with one of my favorite pastas, and that is gnocchetti sardi or malaritas, which is a deliciously chewy Sardinian pasta that, while never traditionally served in this way, <laughs> stands up beautifully to the decadence of this sauce. It's basically an adult mac and cheese and the hug that we could all use right about now. So with all of that said, let's get cooking. Okay, everyone, I'm just finishing up my pasta dough, which I've made with semolina flour and water, then kneaded for about 10 minutes until very smooth and firm. You can find the recipe and all of the details at food52.com. I'm going to wrap the dough tightly in plastic to keep it hydrated and then let it rest at room temperature for about 15 minutes. Now that the dough has rested, let's jump right into our gnocchetti. I'm going to start with a small sliver of my dough and wrap the rest right back up so it doesn't dry out while I work. Next, I'm going to roll the dough into a rope until it's about a half inch in diameter. I like to start in the center, spread my fingers a bit, and stretch the dough in the direction I want it to go. Then I'm going to cut my rope into little pasta pillows about half an inch wide. To shape the gnocchetti, I'm using a ridged wooden board to create some texture that not only looks great, but will also help the sauce adhere to the pasta. First, place a piece of pasta dough at the top of the board. Then, using the side and pad of your thumb, push the dough forward across the board until it naturally curls over on itself once, and you're left with deep ridges on the outside and a hollow interior. It'll take a little bit of practice to get the hang of the motion. But just remember, this dough is very elastic and won't easily tear, so don't be shy with the pressure, because the more pressure you use, the more sauce each piece can catch, and that's exactly what we want. You can also use a bench scraper instead of your thumb to create each piece. Just hold the bench scraper almost parallel to the board and drag the dough across it until it curls over. This will create a tight seashell-like look that's a bit more neat and tidy and definitely satisfies the perfectionist in me. But don't forget that handmade pasta is supposed to look handmade. Okay, now that we've gotten the motion down, it's time to experiment. If you don't have a gnocchi board, you can use the bottom of a crystal rocks glass, and even a tiny colander or a fine cheese grater for some polka dot action. Basically, any kitchen item that can create some texture is great. And if you're not happy with how a piece turns out, just smush it up and try again. You're pretty much working with edible Play-Doh. Once you finish shaping each batch, transfer the pieces to a semolina floured baking sheet or a dry dish towel and repeat the process with the remaining dough. The pasta can sit out and air dry while you work and for up to about four or five hours before cooking. If you wanna make the pasta in advance, you can flash freeze it for 30 minutes on the baking tray, then transfer it to a freezer safe bag or container for longer term storage. Now let's move on to one of my favorite things in the world, caramelized onions. I'm going to start by digging into this beautiful new block of Kerrygold unsalted butter and cut off about four tablespoons. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Melt the butter over medium high heat in a large saucepan or Dutch oven. Then add three yellow onions that have been sliced into about quarter inch pieces. I know this looks like a ton of onions, but these will cook down a lot. Really good caramelized onions take time, so if I'm committing myself to the process, I'm going to make a bunch. Stir the onions and butter together to coat as best you can. Then let them cook, stirring pretty frequently until they're translucent, which takes about 15 minutes. Once they look like this, add a generous dash of kosher salt to help extract more moisture from the onions. Then reduce the heat to medium-low and continue to cook, stirring every few minutes until they're golden in color. 
Low and slow is the name of the game, so this can take up to an hour or more depending on your stovetop and how much patience you have. While the onions cook down, let's make some herb seasoned breadcrumbs. Strip the leaves off a couple of sprigs of fresh rosemary and thyme, then finely chop them and set them aside. Add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil to a skillet over medium high heat, followed by a cup of panko breadcrumbs and a generous pinch of salt. Stir to make sure all of the breadcrumbs are coated in oil. I'm going to keep a close eye on these and stir them frequently to make sure they don't burn. Once I start to see them turning golden, I'm going to stir constantly to make sure they're evenly toasted. Remove them from the heat, stir in the finely chopped herbs, and transfer them to a bowl. This makes a decent amount of breadcrumbs so you can store any extra in the freezer for up to several months. Back to our onions. It's been a while <laughs> and they're starting to get nice and jammy. We're about halfway through, so I think it's time for a couple of episodes of Parks and Rec while I continue to stir every few minutes. Once they start to get more deeply browned and stick to the bottom of the pan, you can add a splash of water to deglaze any areas that may be on the verge of burning. Okay, my friends, we made it. <laughs> my kitchen smells incredible and every minute was worth it. Now I'm going to turn up the heat a bit and deglaze the pan with a quarter of a cup of sherry vinegar, which is going to balance out the richness of this dish beautifully. I love the mild acidity and sweetness of sherry vinegar, but you can also use balsamic or white wine if that's what you have on hand. Cook the onions in the vinegar for a couple of minutes, then season to taste and transfer them to a bowl. As you can see, they're a beautiful deep brown, incredibly jammy, and overall I'm pretty proud of myself. Time to make our quick and creamy cheese sauce. I'm using three Kerrygold cheeses for this dish, ranging from sharp and tangy to sweet and mild. Together, they create a perfectly balanced cheesy experience. I'm grating about two thirds of a cup of each, then adding a couple of generous handfuls of the grated mild cheddar to the mix. If you wanna add more than this, you have my full support. Next, starting in the same saucepan we used for the onions, I'm melting two more tablespoons of Kerrygold unsalted butter over medium-high heat, followed by two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Whisk the two together into a paste and cook for a minute or two until it's bubbling and smells nutty. This is a quick roux that will thicken the sauce and make it extra creamy. Then add one and a half cups of whole milk, a little at a time, whisking constantly to combine. Make sure to incorporate any oniony bits that are still stuck to the bottom of the pan to get all of that flavor. Once all of the milk is added, stir the sauce for about a minute or two until it thickens and coats the back of a spoon. Reduce the heat to low and add the cheeses in three or four increments. Stir between each portion until the cheese is almost completely melted before adding the next handful. Season to taste with salt and pepper, then add the caramelized onions to the sauce and stir to combine. Cook the gnocchetti in well-salted boiling water for about three to five minutes. Always taste one to be sure they're done to your liking. Transfer the pasta directly from the water to the sauce. Stir to combine and simmer the two together for a couple of minutes to meld the flavors. Add a little bit of pasta cooking water to thin out the sauce as needed. Okay, my friends, now all that's left to do is plate up the pasta, Top it with a handful of crunchy herby breadcrumbs, curl up on the couch, and enjoy this big hug in a bowl. Okay everyone, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below, and I really hope to see you next time. Bye!